University, where she is the uh, responsible for the Viva project, um, and she's going to tell us something more about um, authority control in a linked data environment. Jing Wang, just showing you where I come from. Um, the Peregrine Library of John Hopkins Square University is located in Baltimore, Maryland, U.S. Um, John Hopkins also have other campus in Washington, D.C. and uh, Italy, in Cambodia, and Singapore, and uh, Nanjing, China. Um, the shit is that too long. <laughs> um, the shaded area on this map also shows the um, nations and institutions um, Johns Hopkins have um, established the ongoing collaboration with. Um, so um, Johns Hopkins University really um, put strengthening the collaboration across. Um, discipline across globe as a priority in the next few years. Um, that sets a context where we are from. This is the library's the new edition, um, Brody Learning Common. And we are very fortunate to have this new building. Uh, this space uh, does not have much bookshelf. It's mainly consists of um, reading rooms, uh, group study rooms, and open space for students to um, read, study, and socialize. And our students really um, like it. So um, this is all about collaboration. Um, the teamwork has been proven very important to both learning and uh, research. Many libraries have uh, added physical space to facilitate teamwork. However, there are uh, geographical barriers and also organizational and uh, disciplinary barriers. A virtual research network such as Vivo facilitates collaboration across um, these barriers. So before I talk about Vivo, uh, I just want to see a show of hands. Um, how many of you have seen demo of Vivo or look at Vivo side or participate Vivo? So quite a few. And how many of you have worked with Vivo? Great, just one. <laughs> so uh, Vivo is an open source research discovery tool that integrates the information about the researcher with the addition, with additional context, uh, such as their affiliation with organization or groups, uh, and their research activities include brand project or events or professional services, uh, and the research resource not only including publications or data set, but also include um, faci research facilities, software, or instrument they use, and it's much broader. Um, category. So in vivo, you can search, um, as I said, people or organization or activities or courses, um, and you can discover from the search result the related entities. Um, so the data is a very ambiguous term. Uh, the search result come with data, different concept or department working on data infrastructure, and there's a person with last name data. Um, and you, within the Vivo uh, search interface, you can navigate um, in the research network um, via the linkage between the entities. So uh, this is from a person's profile page. You can look at their publications or the course they teach, and from the course, you can see the contributor to the course. So you don't just get a static text, but you get a link to and get additional information. 
Um, Vivo is also an uh, ontology editor. Uh, you can import ontology, modify ontology, and extend ontology. Uh, so here we have uh, there's Vivo's um, core ontology, and we have extended uh, Vivo core ontology based on the Hopkins need. Uh, I also want to mention the Eagle Eye ontology in Vivo. Um, there's overlap between Vivo core, on core ontology and Eagle Eye research resource ontology, and the work currently is in progress to integrate the two into a more modular uh, integrated semantic framework. So, um, and the data in Vivo can be manually entered via the Vivo web application, or it can be automatically um, ingested through the Vivo harvester from either internal data source like a human resource uh, system, student information system, or from external data source such as PubMed or grant.gov. Um, and the data um, can also be disseminated for reuse by ex other, for example, institutional um, content management system or applications. Um, so Vivo deal with a broader spectrum of uh, research metadata. So this is the second poll. Uh, how many of you think library share maintain a broader sp spectrum of the research metadata? It's beyond publication, beyond data set, but including uh, research resource such as facilities, instrument, which are really relate to the research process rather than research output. It's uh, four or five. <laughs> um, so I think this is still, it's a change of mindset where the library's role is in the research. So before we talk about the authority control in linked data environment, uh, let's go back, review why we need authority control. So uh, the objective of the authority control is to maintain metadata quality so people, people can find uh, information. So there uh, include consistency, completeness, ambiguity, and accuracy. Um, but in the linked data environment, um, it has its own characteristics uh, it might introduce more challenge for this data, metadata quality requirement or require add additional metadata requirement. So let's look at the um, characteristics of linked data. So I think the main one is um, it is heterogeneous. It's cross multiple data source and across domains um, because it's um, in linked data environment, data is no longer restrained in traditional single data silo. Traditionally, um, there's records, there's tables, there's database, and the data model is, data is modeled for specific business function, for example, administrative system, student system. There's um, context um, related to the specific business functions. And the records, um, and the table, it's a boundary for the data. It is easy to identify when and by whom the record is updated, and it's easy to assign the ownership to the data, who is responsible, who has access to certain records or certain tables of views. The linked data uh, on the country is made of the resource, property, relationship, and uh, <coughs> there's statements, and uh, many of the statements are um, graphs, which is the group of statements, but it's very uh, flexible, tangible. And there's no clear boundary uh, uh, like the traditional table and uh, records. And because of the interconnection in the linked data 
there's no clear ownership of linked data. Um, who is responsible for the quality of the data? I think this presents a challenge for authority control. So I will use an example. Um, the Science of Learning Institute is a new inst interdisciplinary institute at Johns Hopkins. So when they want to set up the, when, we, when they set up the website, they want to highlight the people, um, basically who they are, their affiliations. Um, this data already exists somewhere in other systems. It doesn't make sense, does it not make sense to recreate this data every time when there's a new institute, a new website is set up. So we thought this is a very good use case for Vivo's reuse of existing data, dissemination of the data. So we try to uh, harvest the data from HR system. So in Vivo, the people has a position, a new position is for organization. The organization can have a website, it can has a name, a label. Um, but when we harvesting from our HR system, we found the organization <coughs> does not, the organization records in HR system does not have website information. And its name is not very consistent. There's a lot of abbreviations and it's not uh, consistent. Because the HR system was never designed for publishing this data. Um, so we end up have to get the website URL and the name from school individual schools um, uh, content management system. So just for this organization and the position the affiliation data, it actually come from has to come from two data sources. So we have to link them. Um, so the question is still what is the organization records in linked data? There's no clear boundaries. And who is the owner of this organization data? Um, there's no clear answer. This present, so we think the linked data presents some opportunities and some challenges regarding to quality control. Regarding to the accuracy, there's many data sources we can choose the good data from different sources and link them together, make a better quality data. But we don't, and most of these sources are from external sources, not from library. We don't have as much control on the quality of the data from external source. Just like HR system, it will take a long time to have them to clean up their um, data, clean up the organization name, to add the URL, it's not part of their workflow. Mm -hmm. uh, so that presents a challenge to the quality control of the metadata. And regarding to the completeness of the metadata, um, we now we have broader spectrum of data source. We can add more data, always can add more data to um, to a specific uh, entity. For example, for the faculty profile, we, besides the publications, the affiliation courses, we can add their um, advisory relationship with students, add their um, uh, pr uh, professional service to the community. Um, the data is somewhere, we just need to get it. Um, but we the li it's still, it's an external data source outside of the library. We don't have much control on the access to the data and the um, level of use uh, on the data. In the previous example, the affiliation data, we don't have much problem with getting the data, but uh, in another use case when we try to get the faculty student advice relationship from student system, we um, have this problem of access. There's a lot of concern about exposing student data. So um, access and the reuse is a challenge. 
Um, so there's other metadata quality, I think, required for linked data um, provenance. Uh, as it mentioned during the conference, is always an uh, issue. And interoperability, and not at the uh, technology level, um, there's talk about APIs, but at the data level, when we map different map data from different data sources to Vivo ontology, whether it, it, the data is compatible, whether we are meaning the same thing, um, there's the data interoperability. Um, and compatible also, it's um, the mapping between the database schema, uh, for example, from HR or from student system, from any other system to Vivo ontology. There's not a direct map, um, and there's a trust whether we trust the data source. Um, certainly, we won't trust the organization name from the HR system, but this trust issue is always um, um, an issue when we deal with external data stores. So uh, here is, um, I think, where the library's role in metadata uh, authority can do. Library's not the authority, definitely. Uh, we're not creator or originator of most of the data. Um, and the library has less control on metadata quality because they are coming from external source. And the library's new role, I think, is more of a metadata curation, just like data set curation. We need to identify uh, authoritative metadata source and evaluate its quality. And we sometimes we need to negotiate the access and the reuse policy. We Vivo currently is the public. Everything in Vivo is uh, public, but not all the data we can mm, open to public, especially related to student uh, or some sensitive um, um, faculty data. Uh, some of our faculty do not want to put the um, courses, time, location data in Vivo. They don't want to get stuck. Um, and the library, I think, need to facilitate the metadata discovery and reuse when there is, when we identify the originator or the owner of the data, they are responsible for the data quality. And if the data is um, in good quality, then it should be widely used by others. There's no need to recreate data maintain the data in many systems um, for the same data. So I think the challenges here is um, the library, what kind of the research metadata that research need most to publish and consume for discovery and collaboration. So remember the, the goal of the Vivo is to facilitate collaboration um, improve the discovery of research and scholarship, not only the output, but in the entire life cycle. And so what kind of data is most useful, most important for researchers? I think this is where the library need to be um, actively engaged in the research process. Uh, we need to step out of the library and be more engaged. Um, so these are just the additional reading or reference regarding to Vivo, and there's a blog on uh, metadata quality in linked data context, uh, which are very interesting to read. So any questions? Thank you very much. Um, I just read a tweet by Lucas Koster, who said that um, you were planning maybe uh, to start up a, a cooperation or a, a, a test with Vivo as well. Um, I don't know. We have some more time. Would it be interesting to tell something about that as well, just out of the top of your head, or? No, 
It's too premature. Okay.